I've been on Instagram for a week, and the worst part about it is seeing all the cool stuff that people do. I mean, like yesterday, I watched six straight hours of Netflix and didn't put on pants once. Welcome to the James Cremetta Experience. I am your host, James Cremetta. We are officially well over 10,000 views. We've got a lot to talk about this week. We have a redneck bonfire. Junior Gillette went off on Sean Payton and his Target selling sexist t-shirts. Let's go. The pool at the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas caught fire Saturday, causing hours of delay. This is quite different than how it usually works. Usually, you don't feel the burn until a few days after you leave Las Vegas. Former Washington Wizard Gilbert Arenas was photographed at a carnival where he had to stop playing the basketball games because he won so many toys. The only real reason I brought this up was to remind you that Gilbert Arenas has not played in the NBA in three years, and this year he made $22 million to play at a carnival with his kids because he signed an awful contract. Put the gun down. Just put the gun down. LeBron James' production company made a deal with Warner Brothers, sparking rumors that there's going to be a Space Jam reboot of Space Jam 2 starring King James. The plot's going to be a little different than the first one, though. In this one, LeBron James can't win with the Toon Squad, so he leaves them, goes plays with the Monstars for three years, wins some titles, and then goes back to the Toon Squad. The big new internet video, besides mine, of course, is showing people getting RKO'd out of nowhere. Here's the latest one. The reason this video is so important is that it marks the first time in history that a college kid fell face first into a pool of his own urine that wasn't directly caused by $10 all you can drink. Last week in Destin, Florida, a couple of hardos rescued a 10-foot hammerhead shark. First of all, I'm all for shark rescues, but if they're in the water, I don't think you should drag the shark out of the water to rescue it. I mean, this is ridiculous. I got kicked off of a beach in Destin for playing Dizzy Bat, and this guy can straddle a 10-foot hammerhead? Yeah. Now, I don't know how many sixes were on the beach that these two guys are trying to impress. I'll tell you who they didn't impress. They didn't impress me. All right, you go bring a shark from out in the ocean, bring it to the beach, straddle it for 10 minutes, and pull a hook out of its mouth. These two guys have a target on their back in the shark community. If you watch the end of the video, the shark's already trying to attack them. These two chumps, in Destin, only two things should happen at the beach. Passing out and passing out. Josh Smith signed with the Los Angeles Clippers for $7 million and was quoted as saying that his family would have to deal with some hardships due to the new contract, which is ridiculous because the last time someone was paid that much money to do so little, he got life in prison. It was announced this week that eSports, the whole realm of competitive video game playing, would start testing for performance-enhancing drugs which if it's video games, I'm guessing they're going to start testing for Doritos, Mountain Dew, and weed. And an installment this week of Guess What Happens Next, let's watch when two Canadians try and build a bonfire. The fact that this is in Canada and not Alabama is pretty incredible, but now that I think about it, no one in Alabama is smart enough to build that big of a bonfire anyways. Three, two, one. Okay, so the bonfire is built. The gas is poured all over it. Let me give you your options. The options A is everything goes smoothly. Options B, nothing lights on fire. Option C, they get blown to the moon and back. You okay? That was the hottest thing to come out of Canada since Shania Twain. A student at Harvard has created a new formula with a bunch of numbers and formulas that I do not understand at all in order to predict the 2015-2016 NFL season. I'm not going to read you all the predictions and formulas, but it does say the Miami Dolphins had the third best chance of winning the Super Bowl, which tells me less about the NFL and more about the declining requirements of getting into Harvard. Just months after signing a $40 million extension, the Saints have cut Junior Gallette after a 2013 video of him on the beach swinging a belt around like Indiana Jones surfaced. I'm 
gonna go on the record and say this: never trust a man who wears a belt to the beach. That's just there's no reason. It's like wearing socks to the beach. So after that video surfaced of Junior channeling his inner Adrian Peterson on that girl, the Saints cut him. No big deal. Junior had two options. One, just kind of wait it out, get on a new team, relax, don't say anything dumb. Or B, do the complete opposite of the first plan. On Junior's girlfriend's Twitter account, he unleashed a hellacious rant on almost every single person in New Orleans. The main person to get attacked in this rant was Sean Payton, who Junior Glitz allegedly called, amongst other things, an alcoholic, Percocet addicted, pillhead, who drinks at practices, and even worse than anything, chews juicy fruit. I mean, look, calling out somebody for being a drunk, a pillhead, a cheating husband, all that stuff, that's fair game. But insulting somebody's gum choices? Do you have no decency, Junior? Actually, while I'm filming this, uh, Junior came out and said on Deadspin that he's never had a Twitter account, and his girlfriend's never had a Twitter account, so uh, hey guys, just forget everything that happened. LOL. The words that I told her. Wasn't me. Just when I thought everything was going to be fun, and just jokes, and puns, and good-looking v-necks, some lunatic group had to start a petition to get this shirt removed from Target because it was sexist. The petition's already got 15,000 signatures, and they're looking for 25,000 signatures to try and get the retail giant to pull the shirt. The shirt says trophy. That's all it says. That's, that's all, that's it. That's all. I'm not making this up. The shirt just says trophy, and people believe this is sexist because I guess somebody has to be mad about something because otherwise it wouldn't be 2015. I just want to talk to the 15,000 people that have signed this petition. You know who buys this shirt? Girls buy this shirt. There's no wife abusing man coming home from Target with this shirt, putting on his rings, and forcing his wife to wear it because it actually says trophy. I just think it's funny that feminists preach trying to give girls more freedom when they're trying to do things like dictate what they wear and dictate what they say and dictate what they do. That's the complete opposite of what y'all should be doing. Just because some girl wants to buy this shirt because she thinks it's funny and she'll wear it around other girls or maybe on a down day or whatever, who cares? It's her choice. Just like it'd be my choice to wear those ridiculous shirts that say guns or has an arrow pointing down that says legend. Their shirts are out there for a reason. You don't have to like every single one of them. If you don't like it, don't buy it. That's the beauty of America. You have a choice. And feminists somehow are trying to take all choice away from women and have this little white line of, hey, you can wear this because this is okay for women. Feminists just need to take a breath. Life really is not that serious. And this shirt is not sparking some crazy sex slave movement. In the last video of the day, we see a man who would have guessed it in Florida who took quite the exception to paying $2 for a bus ticket. Look, I love this video, I really do. But if I wanted to watch some guy force himself into something that big, I would just rewatch the sex scene from Amy Schumer's latest movie, Trainwreck. Hey! 